All right, firstly, firstly, happy 4th of July. Uh, for you non-Americans watching the show, today is the day where we celebrate the birth of our country by uh, getting up, going to the fire station for pancake breakfast, towing our boat up to the lake and getting drunk, and then coming home and lighting off fireworks and maybe blowing off a finger or two. B -B -Q plus. When we left off, it was the spring of 1988, and I had just been fortunate enough to borrow a couple of games off of another kid at school. I got to play uh, Excite Bike and Castlevania. So uh, both great games. And uh, this time I wanted to talk a little bit, I think the title of this video is gonna be like Video Game Friends or something. And this is how I got to play the next two games. You know, it's interesting, you, you kind of, become acquaintances with people in your life, I think, sometimes based on just having like a single point of commonality. Like you might have like a friend at the office or something that you just BS with because maybe you're both Giants fans or something or you both like beer, you know, and you can have like these superficial conversations in the hallway. Hey, did you catch the Giants game last night or whatever? But it like ends there. Like you don't find out that like Bob in accounting is a Giants fan, and then immediately you're like, oh, dude, you should come over to my house tonight and watch the game, right? I don't even hang out with my friends, like friends' friends, much less like I'm trying to get other people from work to come over and hang out with me or whatever. But it's like when you're a kid, you just meet another kid that happens to like the same things that you like, and you're like, oh, dude, we should hang out. You know, let's come over to my house after school. We're gonna play Nintendo together. Like, that's all it takes when you're 10 for somebody to become, at least in some way, your friend. I mean, you still have the people that are like your real friends, but also have all these kids that you would just hang out with because as a kid, you have nothing better to do. So you find out some other kid has a Nintendo and, and you're like, hey, we should hang out and do stuff. So as I said, I was starting, you know, I was going to this new school and I was meeting all these kids that had Nintendos. I mean, you'd, you'd end up meeting like friends of friends. Like I said in the last episode, there was that kid's house I went over to that had all those games and and they had uh, Mike Tyson's punch out, you know, but I never really hung out with that kid, but I can't even tell you the name of the kid that took me over to their kid's house. It was just like, we were all into Nintendo games, so that was just your single point of commonality, and so you would just hang out with these other kids. I ended up meeting some kid, and we got to talking, we both had Nintendos, and he said, hey, you know, you should come over to my house, you know, after school or whatever, and I was like, yeah, of course. And to my point, I couldn't even tell you the kid's name. For some reason, I wanna say Chad, but that sounds wrong. But we're going to call him Chad, and we have to call him something. He never met my parents. I don't think he ever came over to my house. Uh, I certainly never met his parents. Um, his house was closer. Like, it was on the way to my house was, was, like, his house. So I would just stop over there, play games for a couple hours, and then, you know, I'd have to be home. I think I, my curfew was, like, 5 o'clock uh, when I was a kid, which is weird to think about now. Like, I don't have kids, so I can't speak to this. So maybe some of you guys... Uh, do, do, Parents still do that? Like, is it still cool for your kid to just come home at five o'clock and you have no idea where they were? Because when I was a kid, that was totally normal. Like, you got out of school at three, and then, like, I had two hours to just do whatever I wanted. My parents weren't worried about, like, well, where's Chris? It's just like, well, it's not five o'clock yet. So the school I was going to, for some reason, the neighborhood I lived in had, like, lots of apartment complexes. And so for that reason, it had, like, a lot of single parents. So this kid, Chad, um, Chad, it was like his dad's condo, and I think he stayed with his dad during the week. So he didn't really even, I think, have a room uh, in this condo because he was just there during the week to go to school, and then you know, weekends he wasn't around because I think he went with his mom or something. So, uh, and I would go over to his house, and, and we were both latchkey kids. Like, I had a house key, and, you know, my parents worked, and so when I got off of school, you know, if I went home, there was nobody home. So, and he was the same way. So, like, we went over to his condo or his dad's condo, and his dad was not around. Like I said, I never even met his dad because, you know, I had to leave and go home before his dad got home from work. So this was literally just some kid where all we did was get together and play video games. Like, we didn't talk about other stuff. We didn't become friends outside of that. We didn't go places together, ride bikes, whatever. I just went to his house. We played video games, and then I went home. And then at some point, I don't know, maybe... Maybe the school year ended and he wasn't coming around to his dad's house anymore. I have no idea. Like, I don't, it's not like I had some kind of falling out with him, but it's just we hung out and played Nintendo together, and then after a while, I just didn't really see him anymore. Um, so, but uh, I distinctly remember playing two games at this kid's house. Uh, the first game that I 
initially played when, when I went over to his house. Uh, I have them down here. Uh, the first game we played was Blades of Steel. And um, this was actually probably the first sports game that I ever played, I think. You know, I didn't have any systems before uh, the Nintendo, so this might be the first sports game I ever played. Now, I really feel like with the Nintendo, that was like the first generation or the first console where the sports games at least did a respectable job of trying to mimic the real sport. You know, you could play, you know, basketball or whatever on the Atari 2600, but it was pretty lame. Uh, the only thing I could think maybe the exception would be like baseball. Like the Intellivision had a good baseball game. I think it was just called Major League Baseball. Um, but there were some decent baseball games. But I think outside of that, the games were pretty poor, in my opinion. And uh, so Blades of Steel was the first sports game I remember playing. I honestly didn't know anything about hockey uh, at that time. You know, I was living in Northern California. At that time, hockey just wasn't a big deal. We didn't have the Sharks yet. The only team in California was the Kings, which were way down in Los Angeles. But you know, hockey, I mean, even today, hockey's not that that popular, but, you know, back then, it was even less so. So, but I mean, I knew what ice hockey was, and so I mean, the game was cool. Uh, really, the main thing I remember about the game was the digitized speech, because I think that's the first time I'd ever heard digitized speech in the game. You know, it had, you know, it said Blades of Steel when you loaded the game up, and then it had, what, Face Off, Get the Pass... And then I know it had the little, oh, when somebody, you know, got pushed over or whatever. But at, at the time, that sounded really, really cool. Blades of Steel. Uh, all right, so I'm going to pick uh, Los Angeles just because they're the closest. And just to open some old wounds, uh, we'll pick Vancouver to play against. Now, I used to not understand what they were doing here. Like, why are they dancing around in circles like figure skaters? But then I, I figured it out. This is supposed to be like pre-game warm-ups. Face-off! Oh my god! I just got raped. That guy just kicked my ass, took the puck, and scored. Fight. Payback! Some people think that uh, Blades of Steel is the better hockey game. Other people think that Nintendo's ice hockey was better. They're both really good, so it's just kind of up to you. Uh, I don't know how, if this is common knowledge, really, that Blades of Steel was actually an arcade game before it was a Nintendo game. And uh, if you go play that one, I honestly think that the Nintendo version plays better, but uh, the arcade version has better sound samples. And if you go play that, you can see they just took the same sound samples and brought them over to the Nintendo. Obviously, they're not as good a quality, and there are far fewer of them. But it was fun, and it was something we could play two-player. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and then at some point later, after I was hanging out with this kid for maybe a few weeks, he ends up getting a new game. And uh, I remember he made a big deal about this game because he was telling me about how, you know, you can't get this game anywhere. And his dad, I guess his dad had some kind of job where he traveled for work. Because I remember him making a big deal that his dad was down in L.A. for work. And that's where he had to get the game. And I remember him telling me he paid some, you know, exorbitant amount of money for it, like $100 or something. Which, I mean, you know how kids exaggerate. So, I don't know how true that was. But very possibly paid over retail for it. But this was really my first experience with, you know, the sort of Nintendo chip shortage. And games being scarce or being hard to find. Because before that, I had no idea. Like, well, why can't you just go to the store and just buy the game? But, um, you know, you, you couldn't always, you couldn't get the popular games. And uh, this was also in, I believe, my first experience playing a game co-op. Uh, now, I had Akari Warriors, but I don't think I had played a co-op with anybody uh, yet. I, I did later, but... Um, so I think this was the first time I played a game co-op with somebody. And I remember that being really fun. And uh, if you haven't picked up on what game I'm talking about yet... Uh, the game is, of course, Contra, which, you know, I, I kind of feel the same way I did when I was talking about Castlevania. It's just like, 
what do you say about Contra? Um, still one of the, you know, I think most beloved games on the NES. Uh, this was also my first experience with the famed Konami code, which I think back then we just called the Contra code. You know, I remember we used to always put in the code. Uh, we didn't even bother trying to play it straight. You know, if we didn't beat it, we came close. Because if you got two guys with 30 men each and you can't beat the game, that's pretty lame. Uh, I remember that the game really had a reputation for being hard. So, like, we didn't feel bad at all about using the Konami code. Just because, you know, the game's so hard, you can't, it's impossible without the code. Which, no, it's not. It's just, you know... A lot of those games, I'd say the same thing about Castlevania, I'd say the same thing about Gradius, I'd say the, the same thing about most games that people think are hard. It just takes practice, you know, but for some reason when you sit down and play a game, you know, if when you get game over in the first level, you're just like, oh, this game's too hard. And the, I, the concept when you're a kid of like, no, you just have to keep chipping away at it and like learn how to succeed at the game was like foreign. Because, I mean, think about how, how much easier, like, Super Mario Brothers or something is. You know, that, those games kind of coddle you. And, uh, again, I would say the NES version is better than the arcade. Now, of course, maybe I'm biased a little bit. But, uh, you know, if you go even just watch some gameplay footage of the arcade, like, it just doesn't look that great. You know, I mean, obviously the graphics are better, but the gameplay just doesn't seem as good. And, I mean, that was really the best thing, I think about this game. Like, yes, it has the music that it's, like, famous for. Uh, I don't know, are the mini-bosses still popular? I, I don't really know. I remember when I was in college, maybe the mini-bosses were kind of were kind of popular, and I think what made them sort of as famous as the mini-bosses were, were their covers of the of the Contra soundtrack. But, I mean, the, that, the music is amazing, the graphics are really good, but to me, it's really, that game is all about the controls, which you need with a game like that, because it's, you know, so easy to get into situations where, you know, if you don't have, like, really tight controls so that you can dodge this or dodge that, uh, you're just going to get killed. Uh, you know, of course, it had the cool weapon system where you could pick up different weapon upgrades. I'm not really sure I'd ever played a game that had something like that before. Of course, the spread gun is the best weapon in the game, and I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. Uh, I used to hate the... Why does the fire weapon, like, twirl as, as it goes through the air? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then I don't like the laser weapon that much just because, you know, if you try to rapid fire it, it just, like, doesn't go any further. And it, it's, it's weird. I don't know if it has something to do with how many sprites you can have across a single line. Like, maybe it was a hardware limitation. I'm not really sure, but I used to hate that weapon. But if you can get the spread weapon and then just hang on to it, you're, you're good to go. I'm not going to use the Konami code here just because, um, well, I don't know why not, but we'll just play the three lives and then call it good. Here's that fire weapon I was telling you about. I, mean, I guess it's good for this level for trying to kill those, those like, gun emplacements because you can hit them when you're laying on the ground, but it just seems like a weird weapon. Like, if I was going to, like, design a flame weapon, I would make it different than this, you know, maybe like a, like, more of just a flamethrower, but then maybe it would be too close to, um, the spread gun, you know. All right, so now we've got the spread gun. Like I said, by far, this is the best weapon in the game. Here's another point bonus. We grab that. This structure, or whatever you want to call it, actually makes an appearance as, I mean, I don't know what you call it, like a mid-level something in um, Contra 3 for the Super Nintendo. I, I never really cared for the, you know, was it the second, the second stage and the fourth stage where you're going through the fortress? Um, I've never really been a big fan of those. Now, interestingly, in the arcade version, you can actually, it's almost like a, you can choose your path when you go through the fortress, which I thought was kind of neat. So now we're inside the base, and this is what I was talking about, where I just like Contra as like a side-scrolling action game. But, but back in the day, I'll say, these look pretty cool just because you had like this pseudo 3D view. I swear this thing spits out more of these bubbly things if you have the spread gun. Like if you just have the standard rifle, I feel like just every now and then, like once every few seconds, it releases one of those bubbly things. But when you have the spread gun, it's like it makes this section way harder. Wish you could shoot those mortar dudes. I hate these guys with the backpacks. Like they're just coming through here and it's like, grab a gun, you know, do something. Um, the game definitely has iconic boss battles. Like some of the boss battles are really cool. Some of it seems like it's a little bit ripped off from like the alien movies. Oh, wow. All right. Now we got problems. 
You know, I got too cocky, that's what happened. I was doing well, and I got cocky. People think this game is really hard, and I'm not saying that it's easy, but... The more you practice and learn the game, you know, it's really not that bad. I mean, I'm rusty, obviously, because I haven't spent that much time with this game lately. Although, sadly, I have practiced a little bit. Uh, you know, just so I could do this today. I think I forgot to mention the machine gun. Alright, game over. We're done. I forgot to mention the machine gun. The machine gun is also pretty cool, just because you don't have to hammer the button. The machine gun is probably my second favorite weapon, only because I think the laser gun and the flamethrower are basically useless. Um, you know, I the fact that it wasn't on the NES Mini Classic Mini, is it NES Mini? NES Classic Mini? Weird that the first Contra was not included. Like, I would have thought, like, oh, well, they just couldn't get a license from Konami. But then they have Super C on there, which seems odd, but I'm sure there must be a reason. I don't think anybody actually thought that people liked Super C better than Contra, but... Cool game. Uh, kind of as a side note, I always thought it was interesting that in, in Europe the game was released as Probotector and uh, all the sprites were replaced, like the character sprites and the enemy sprites were replaced with like robots. Now I've, from what I've read that's because there was uh, like laws over there about you couldn't have violent games with like humanoid characters. I was in uh, Ireland a few years ago and for some reason, one of the things I wanted was, like, I, was, I wanted to find some retro gaming stores, and I wanted to find a copy of Probotector, because I thought it would just be neat to have. And I ended up finding a, a, a gaming store in Dublin, and they had a complete-in-the-box copy of Probotector, and they wanted, like, 80 euros for it or something, so I was like, forget it, you know? So I think I, I ended up getting, um, uh, I got an F1 game, which I know is predictable, but... Uh, I'm not really sure what else to say. Like I said, Contra, you know, what? if you haven't played Contra, you should. Uh, hopefully for some of you younger guys, the game's not, you know, the difficulty is not off-putting. Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, I, I tried playing Contra with a, with a younger guy that, that I worked with. You know, he came over and he wanted to play some two-player simultaneous games, and I was like, dude, let's play Contra. And, uh, you know, I put in the game, and, you know, he'd never played it before because he's, you know, much younger. He's in, like, in his early 20s. And I even put in the, con the Konami code. And um, he just was not having it. Like, he, got, he was getting, like, upset that the game was so difficult. And I was just like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, when I was a kid, that's just how it was. But, you know, I mean, it's just, I'm not criticizing. It's just, it's a generational difference. You know, games, games were a lot different for him growing up than they were for me. You know, I don't mind a game kicking my ass over and over and over again because it just makes me want to come back for more. But, you know, I understand that games aren't really like that anymore. So that's about it. I don't know what else to say about Contra. You know, maybe I'll maybe I'll play the game for a little bit and try to talk while I'm playing it and have some other things to say or something. I don't I don't really know. But uh, I don't know whatever happened. To, like I said, I don't know what happened to, to Chad. I think maybe he was just staying with his dad to go to that school because he was never around on the weekends either. So I think he was just gone after that. Um, which was too bad, because I enjoyed playing video games with him. Although, like I said, it was this weird, superficial relationship where it's just like, we play video games together, and, like, that's it. You know, I went through all these these crappy games I had, but now, in a row, I got to play Excitebike, Castlevania, uh, Blades of Steel, and now Contra. So, you know, I had a pretty good spring in, uh, in 1988. And uh, so this is going to be the last episode while we're still in school, because uh, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about you know, school comes to an end, it's the last day of school, and then the summer of 1988 was a, was a pretty cool summer for me. And uh, that's going to be, as I said before, that will be the last episode where I'm still living with my dad, and then I'm going to go back to living with my mom and hanging out with Jonathan, and then we're just going to have uh, a crazy amount of awesome games to talk about. So that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.